morning, New Wine, and blessings to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, we are one week out from Easter, and uh, we are still celebrating the Easter celebration. We are Easter people. We talked about that a little bit last week, and I talked about your comeback and what your comeback will be. Uh, we know what Jesus has done on our behalf, and we're so thankful uh, for everything that has happened. So here we are uh, in the midst of this COVID-19 crisis, and uh, you're tired, I'm tired, we're all tired uh, of the way that all of this has come about. And I think there are some things that uh, we need to hear in the midst of this that will help us and let us understand uh, maybe a little bit more of what God is doing in you, through you, through others, uh, in our country, in our world. Um, we are being replenished, and and I see the responses of people on social media and different things that give me the idea that people are looking to God for information, looking to God for uh, the answer to what it would be that all of this could possibly be about. I don't know uh, how you feel. I have felt frustrated. I have felt uh, insecure, I have felt uh, neurotic, I have felt emotional, uh, I have felt all kinds of ways besides possibly uh, faithful. And so I come to you today and remind you that Jesus is gentle with us. Um, as you heard in the song uh, just uh, a little while ago by Chuck King, uh, he is a gentle Jesus. He, he deals with us carefully. And he doesn't force himself uh, to, to move us in ways that we are not ready or willing to be moved. And so this morning I want to read to you a scripture about what it means to, to be patient in suffering. And uh, James was the pastor uh, of the New Testament church. And, and so coming out of James 5, I want to begin back in the 7th verse uh, as... He begins and he says these things about being patient uh, in suffering. He says, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and somehow should bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. May God add his blessing to the reading of this word. Beloved, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I come to you today reminding you that we hear all kinds of things that are terrible, that are frightening. We hear of death and sickness and, and ill and sin and all kinds of 
negative things in our world today. And yet, we have a Savior who has already done the job of lifting us up, bringing us home. We just need to accept it and walk in His way. I want to remind you that what we hear in the news media and what we hear from both sides of the aisle, the left and the right, the Democrats and the Republicans, and even those that we don't agree with theologically. Brothers and sisters, we are here. This is our world. We are in this together. We are not to be of this world, but we are called to live in this world. And so I call you today to be reminded that we are the people that are to be praying for, with each other, in sickness and in health. You might have heard that line from a wedding ceremony, and yet that is exactly who Jesus has come for, is his bride. Brothers and sisters, we are the bride of Christ. We are the bride of Christ no matter what church you attend, no matter what your theology may be. Jesus came for you. He, he comes for all people, not just those who are Christian, but for all people. I would like for us to pray. I would like for us to pray for everyone this is literally a time of realignment, revitalization, refocus, comeback, if you will, from last week. So, how will you be praying, not just for your comeback, but for your brothers and sisters, for those who agree with you and those who do not? How will you come back from places where you have needed forgiveness and you have needed to offer forgiveness to others. This has been quite a week, and as we look to reopening our country, I pray that you will reopen your hearts to those who need to hear the love of Jesus. For we are called to love one another in all things. Beloved, let the reopening of this country be the reopening to a revival that is coming, that Jesus is leading, and that you are a part of every day, every hour, every minute. Let the Lord fill your soul with his power and his resurrection. Let us pray. Father God, today we come to you and we just give you thanks that we don't have to go find a place. We don't have to look any further than within our own heart and our own mind to know that you have freed us, you have redeemed us, you have forgiven us. Lord, help us now to let go of that which keeps us bound. Let us be untied. Let us begin the comeback. Let us reopen our world with the power of your love. And we will give you the praise and we will give you the glory. For you are the one that redeems us all. We ask these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, New Wine. Thank you all people that would be watching in any way today. Thank you that you are sustaining us and continuing to support us in our ministry. If you have needs, please let us know. We will come and we will do our best to provide for you and lift you in prayer and also provide you with all the things that you may need in this time of crisis. I give you thanks. I give you thanks, Lord, for everyone who would see this message. Let their hearts be moved. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. It is the day of the Lord. Amen.